I want to talk about housebreaking and housebreaking is very important. It's one of the things that the owner starts screwing up right away. The first thing the owner wants to do with their puppy is buy them lots of stuff at a pet store and one of the things that they buy is wee wee pads thinking that oh you, you know this is how I'm going to get the dog house broken is if there's an easy way to get the dog house broken there's not and the the worst thing that you can do is buy wee wee pads people that use these things for a month end up using them for the entire life of the dog you're training the dog to go to the bathroom inside with those things they're scented with a pheromone that smells like shit and piss the dog to attract the dog to go to the bathroom. You're bringing shit and piss in the house. That's what it smells like to the dog. One of the worst things that I've ever seen people do, and I've seen people do this several times, take the wee-wee pads, put them in the bottom of a kennel or crate, and then put the puppy in there. I'm not, if somebody ever contacts me again, I've dealt with these dogs many times, and they tell me that they're wee wee pad training the dog and they're having issues with the, with the puppy and they're looking to get it trained. And they, they tell me that they put wee wee pads in the crate. I'm not dealing with them. Okay. Because one, they, they clearly don't have the actual, they did like no research on how are they going to get the dog house broken. They don't understand crate training and they're screwing up crate training. Those dogs are very difficult to deal with and it requires extra time. It does. They're training the dog to go in the crate. Okay, do you know what kind of problem that can, can cause? You wanna crate train the dog and that's creating the dog with this denning instinct that you know that the dog doesn't wanna to go to the bathroom in its den. So if you're teaching the dog to go to the bathroom and it's den, you're doing absolutely the wrong thing. As a, as a professional, every time I hear this, uh, other dog trainers, you know, we talk and they say, yeah, I had somebody contact me that's putting wee wee pads in the, the, the crate, you know? And it's just like, oh, one of those again. Like, oh, this must be how it's done or something. You get a dog, you've done zero research, okay? I don't even think it says it on the on the wee wee pad box to do that. You don't do that. Don't ever put the wee wee pads in the kennel in the in the crate, okay? And don't ever buy wee wee pads. It just tells the dog the wrong thing. I guarantee you, if you start using wee wee pads and, and you've used them for a month or two, plan on buying them for the rest of the life of the dog. And also plan that the dog that's wee wee pad trained will stop using the wee wee pad and just going anywhere in your house. It's a scam. It's a gimmick. There's so many gimmicks with dogs. Now, as far as housebreaking goes, another thing that you should keep in mind is that if you're trying to housebreak your dog, like Finn, Finn gets no water past eight, eight o'clock. Okay. So eight o'clock at night, he can have water. No water past that. He has to wait until the morning. If you load the dog up with water at 10 o'clock, it's going to pee at night a whole lot. Okay, so you have, to, you have to feed them in a regular time every day. You have to give them water throughout the day, but stop giving them water at a certain point. Now, how much sleep am I losing with Ben? Lots. And that's, that's the proper way to do it. He's easy to wake up for, though. I love the guy. Every time I take him out, he goes to the bathroom. He takes a leak. You know, we get so much success with Finn that he's, he's sort of a pleasure to housebreak, even though that I'm losing sleep. But what I, what I want to say is that if you're trying to housebreak your dog and, and you're not losing sleep, then you're not doing it right. I'll tell you where I'm at with Finn right now. Um, he's, he's been here for... Uh, you know, a couple weeks now, I think he's about 11 weeks old, something like that, something like that, give or take. And um, Finn, I take him out at midnight, and then I take him out at 2.30, and then I take him out again at 6.30 and 8.30. And do I, do I use an alarm? No, I just know that the dog needs to go out at these times and my, you know, I, I can wake up. But if you need to set an alarm, you want to be getting the dog, you want to be waking the dog up, sort of.
but usually Finn's body clock knows when I'm waking up and gonna wake up. So he's up, but he's not up and moving around. So we take Finn out, he goes to the bathroom, I'm bring him back in. But you you want to be losing sleep. You know, if you if you can't if you can't do it, then hire somebody else to do it. But the, the only way you're gonna get the dog house broken is by losing sleep. It's it's a fact. You think that there's an easy way to do it? There's not. If you had a human child, you would be losing sleep too. This is a dog, like a dog baby. So plan on losing sleep. You, you, you wanted the dog, right? Either pay somebody like me to do it or you get up and do it. Don't be lazy. You want to get the dog housebroken as fast as possible. God, he's cute. Look at him. He's just chilling. He's chilling like a little villain. But, um... That's it. Now, my ultimate goal is by the time he's about 13 weeks, I'd like to be able to sleep in, meaning, so Finn goes out at midnight, and then I can sleep into 7.30 or 8. That would be awesome. And that's usually about the time that, the, the you know, they grow quick. Two weeks makes a big difference in, in a puppy's life. You know, it's like, look, look, at, look at my videos on the pigeons. Right, like the baby pigeons. In 30 days, they they go from being able to fit in a teaspoon to being fully feathered and being able to kind of fly. Dogs are the same way; they grow quickly. So two weeks, you know, his body's grown. He can, you know, has more muscle strength and his bladder's working better. You know. He's awesome though. This this guy, seriously, every time I take him out, doesn't matter. I'm getting I you know, I'd get up 2:30 at night and and 6 a.m. to take him out anyway. But to be able to take a dog out that goes to the bathroom, you know, right when you take him out, I know he's going to do it. It's awesome. Some puppies, you might have a puppy that you take him out and go to the bathroom and they're just standing around like, "What do I do?" You know, you might have to bring him back upstairs and take him out in another 10 or 15 minutes. Not Finn. Finn's a very good boy. You know, he's, he's getting that. He's, get, he's getting everything. But your housebreaking is something you really want to get on this and you want to get on it quick. I mean, many times I'm taking a dog that's five, six months old and the owner's saying, yeah, he's not housebroken yet. He's not crate trained. You know, just that's, that's a, that's a, that's a bad sign. You know, you, you need to lose sleep. If you're going to get a dog, think of it as like, you you know, you want to have a baby and you don't want to lose sleep. Well, you shouldn't have had the baby. This, this is the solution. You hire somebody like me. You get the puppy. You hire the dog trainer to take the puppy for a couple months. You get the puppy housebroken, crate trained. And the dog learns other stuff, and then the dog comes back in. The dog's still real young. He's coming back before five months of age. And it'll be crate trained. We'll have an idea how long he can hold it. Right now, about four hours at night during the day. I wouldn't push him to four hours. You know, dogs sort of respond to the cir circadian rhythm. So he can hold it longer at night, maybe during the day, you know, two and a half, three hours. But we want to have an idea how you should have an idea how long the dog holds it. You don't want to put them in the crate any longer than you think the dog can hold it. Like if, if you have to go away for four hours, okay, and you think your dog can only hold it for three, you better not put it in the crate because if it starts going in the crate, you've screwed up crate training. Just like the person that put the wee-wee pads in the crate, you know? You're screwing it up. The dog starts going to the bathroom in the crate. You got a problem on your hands. If the dog goes to the bathroom in the crate once or twice, if you're going to start crate training right away, not that big of a deal. You just don't want it consecutively. You know, if the dog has an accident, has an accident, it's probably going to be because you screwed up. Just make sure the crate is cleaned out real good and don't let it happen again. But during the whole Say hypothetically, let's talk about Charlie the English Cocker Spaniel. Same thing. Charlie was pretty good. He got up 
to speed really quick within a couple days just going to the bathroom outside maybe the whole time that I had him he had a couple accidents in the crate no big deal Finn's actually doing better than Charlie the English Cocker Spaniel as far as crate training goes he's this this dog is like he's man you take him out he's going to the bathroom there was a little bit of a transition coming into the city meaning Finn was really really wants to go to the bathroom on grass and coming into the city we don't really have grass and I don't want to walk him to grass because he doesn't have all his shots so we're just going right outside the door took him a couple days that like you know it's not really about peeing on grass or peeing on it's just about peeing outside so you you might have a little bit of you know the dog doesn't want to go to the bathroom you just have to stay on target and keep trying to take the dog out and get success when the dog goes to the bathroom, look at how good he's fucking crashing that. Look at him, he's looking at me. You're cute, dude. Um, there might be a little uptick and you might have to like, you know, sort of take the dog out more. Like when you get it, like if it's coming from someplace that, say you got it from a breeder and the dog was used to hitting the grass and was going to the bathroom, but then doesn't. And then it has to go to the bathroom on concrete. You might have to take it out more. Just know that you want to build on success and get the dog outside. Don't use this fresh patch thing. That's stupid. You're bringing sod into your house. Once again, you're training the dog to go to the bathroom in your house. That's lazy. You got the dog, but you don't want the inconvenience of housebreaking it. So you person with, that's using fresh patch or the wee wee pad, you're being lazy. Dogs aren't about convenience. They aren't. If you, if you got the puppy and you don't want to take it out, why'd you get the puppy? Or if you get the puppy and do something like Finn's owner or Charlie's owner, you will hire somebody like me to, that's totally legit. It is. It's a great way to do it. You get that puppy when it's real young, you get it to the trainers, it's coming back, you know, being able to do some stuff. So you're not going to, you'll be able to work with the dog when it comes back. That's, that's being a smart owner. And it's not lazy either. It's not. That's not about laziness. That's about being intelligent. There are not enough logical people that are getting, getting dogs. We have 4 million dying every year because of lack of training or no training. Lack of training or no training could be housebreaking. You got a dog that's shitting in your house, okay? Because you used wee wee pads. It's improper training. And you're bummed out. And where do you think that dog goes? It goes to the shelter. It gets in the system. Some of those dogs that get in the system, they never get out of the system. They get, get, they get put down. It's just a statistical fact. Four million are dying every fucking year. Housebreaking is important. You want the dog to go outside. Now, the American Veterinary Association says that no longer than eight hours for the average dog. So we all know that dogs can hold it longer, okay? But all dogs are different. So I have a dog, Mango, that needs to go out four times a day. He's 18 years old. He's always need to go out at least four times a day. Some dogs, three times a day is fine. If it's just spread out in, you know, increments, it's fine. But uh, honestly, I, I've known people that have said like, oh, my dog only needs to go out twice a day. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You're making the dog hold it, like building up ketones in the, in the body. You know, come on. Why'd you get the dog? Oh, well, he can hold it. I don't want to hear it, you know? And on a rare occasion, I had a pet service year, years ago. I did run across people that said that the dog only need to go out once. And in that case, whenever I ran across somebody like that, that said that, like say they were going out of town, they wanted, uh, me or one of my employees to come over and take care of the dog. And I said, well, the dog only needs to go out once. I'd say, sorry, I don't want the job. I don't want to deal with you. I think it's cruel. You got the dog, but you can't find three times during the day to take the dog out to pee. And I am not talking about walking the dog for 45 minutes, three times a day. You shouldn't need to do that. Your dog should be like Finn and be able to go out, and Finn will be like this when he's an adult. The owner will be able to take him out and go to the bathroom right away. And that's how I train all dogs. It's just, it's easier with Finn. Finn's sort of like naturally like, 
I'm going to go out and pee. But that's how my dogs do it. That's how any dog that does a board and train with me does it. It's none of this like you have to walk the dog and, you know, maybe it'll go to the bathroom in 25 minutes. No, as soon as we hit the door, hurry, hurry, go to the bathroom. I give it the potty command. And you should start in using the potty command when the dog's a puppy. Say, hurry, hurry. You're taking the dog out, you know it's going to go to the bathroom, start saying, hurry, hurry. And that way it's getting habituated to the word and by association it'll start peeing, right, when it hears that word. You'll say, hurry, hurry, and the dog will start peeing. You want that. You don't want to have to walk the dog for a half an hour. That's ridiculous. And if you want to spend a half an hour with your dog, you should, don't, don't even spend a half an hour walking your dog. What you should do is spend about 10 to 15 minutes training your dog. That exercises the dog's mind. That is exhausting to the dog and you're doing something positive. You're conditioning in, in the commands that the dog needs to know to live in a human world. Walking the dog, I've run into these people. Oh, I walk my dog 45 minutes an hour a day. Okay, we'll go ahead and do that. But you also train the dog. Why don't you spend less time walking the dog and spend more time training the dog? That makes for a healthy, happy dog. You're housebreaking. The, one of the other important things that you can do with housebreaking is put your dog on a raw diet. But it has to be a, a raw diet with a low fiber profile. Like Abity. Abity makes a great raw diet. So you can put your dog on Abity and you'll have an easier time housebreaking than giving a kibble. Remember kibble? Kibble's dry. Your dog eats that dry. He hated kibble, by the way. He loves raw diet. Some dogs are like that. They hate the kibble. All dogs love raw diet. You feed them kibble, it's dry, and then they, they eat it, and then they have to drink a bunch of water, so they have to artificially hydrate the food when it's inside, and then it expands, pushes on their bladder, and pushes out, you know? Makes them go to the bathroom. And even if you wet the kibble, you're artificially hydrating it, and you're giving them too much water. Once again, it might be hydrated going in, but it still expands in the, in the body of the dog, pushes out because it's full of fiber. It's, it's full of inappropriate stuff. You know, I, I'm sorry, but the notion that your dog needs a bunch of fruit is absurd. To say that they're omnivorous is ridiculous. It's a carnivore. They might eat stuff that is like plant material, but let me give you the the example, like with your, your dog will eat grass. It's either going to throw it up or it's going to shit it out. And either way, it's going to look the same as it, it went in. It's undigestible to the dog. So thinking that your dog needs a bunch of fruit and raw vegetables and stuff like that, that's absurd. Your dog can't even utilize it. So why are you giving it? Most people know this that are in the know would tell you that things like oats can be an irritant to the dog. Yes, I use oats. I'll use oats with feeding a dog, but it's such a minuscule amount. I use grains like rice, but it's such a minuscule amount. It's just used as a little bit of fiber because that's what the dog needs. It needs some fiber, but it doesn't need the amount of fiber that's in pet food. And if you're gonna use a pet food with a puppy, Use Abity or something that's like that, that has a low fi fiber profile, so you could get the dog housebroken. It has smaller poops. The poops aren't expanding. You know, the food's not expanding inside the dog. You know, you want the dog to have as small as poops as possible, and you're not going to get that with grain-free. By the way, grain-free, just so you know, is just as bad as pet food with grain in it. It's just a marketing thing to sell to people. Oh, it's grain free. Oh, that, that's better, right? Yeah, sure it is. You, you think wolves, you think wolves are being shot going out of Yellowstone because they're, they're eating farmers' apples off of trees? No, they're eating sheep. So what, what the fuck are they putting apples and shit like that? And you know, I'm not saying, listen, if I have some blueberries, I might give two or three blueberries along with giving, you know, a raw diet. That's part of the raw diet. That's, I'm giving it as fiber, not thinking that the dog is going to utilize this, digest it, you know, as like a, a rabbit would or a human would. 
their digestive tract is pretty much from their head to their butt. That's it. It's real short for a reason. That's why they can digest. They can eat all kinds of bacteria and not have a problem. Salmonella is a problem for human beings. It's not a problem for your dog. It's a public health issue for humans, not for, for canines and cats. That's how it is. And by the way, if you're giving your dog a raw chicken diet and you get the chicken from a store, like a, a grocery store, it's not going to have salmonella. Do you know why? Listen up, because those eggs, before the chicken is even hatched, are inoculated with a salmonella vaccine. So those Tyson chickens that you get at Walmart and those chickens that you get from the grocery store, from big old factory farms, they're all inoculated. They can't have salmonella. The chance, chances of you getting salmonella from chicken from a grocery store are slim to none. If you get your chickens from a farm that's like some kind of free range farm that doesn't use antibiotics and stuff, yeah, you might, you might be getting, getting salmonella yourself or if you're buying it for your dog, you might, you know, that's a good way to get it. But generally speaking, you're, you're safe with those factory farms and chicken. So what most people use is, is uh, a raw, raw diet where they use uh, raw chicken as a base. Remember, cooked chicken bones are harmful to a dog. Raw chicken bones are not. They're hollow and easy for the dog to digest. All right? But with a dog this age, you would never give a dog this age bone-in chicken. You have to smash it or grind it if you're going to do that. If you want to do that, if you don't want to, you know, buy Abity or something like that, you could also buy ground beef and make a, make a prepared raw diet for a puppy, certainly. But you have to add calcium. You have to add calcium. Dogs need a lot more calcium. All right? So don't ever give bone-in chicken to a puppy like this if it was a dog in the wild, this dog would, if this dog was a wolf, this dog would not be killing shit. The animal that was killed would either be brought home, sort of already crunched up by the adult, or it might be regurgitated by the adult, but there has been a mastication process already happening. I, I don't know why this is so hard, and I don't know why there's people putting out stuff about raw diet that absolutely know nothing about raw diet. They got some dogs, and, you know, they start giving a raw diet, and all of a sudden they're the expert on everything. You know, I know, I know one, one guy that knows absolutely nothing about dog training, put videos out about dog training, now he's putting out videos about raw diet from what I hear. This guy was uh, somebody that fed their dog Purina and thought that it was good dog food. So there's a lot of idiots that you'll see on the internet. It's just a fact. Don't fucking listen to what they say. Do not give your, your puppy raw chicken, bone-in chicken without either smashing it or grinding it. They have these little tiny milk teeth. You sort of wean them into it. By the time the dog's about five months old, you might... You know, you might smash it less. And then by the time the dog's six months old, like Hanu can totally handle a, a piece of uh, bone and chicken right now. He's a little bit over six months, I believe. No problem. Eats it like a wolf. But we, I didn't give it to him when he came here right at five months. One, he didn't know how to work it. So you sort of help him by smashing it up real good and then give it to him. That way you know that there, there's, there's not gonna be any problems. You can also give, give it to them frozen at a point. You know, you can give it to them frozen and they can eat it frozen. But if you're having problems with the dog, you're giving it to them frozen and they're going to the bathroom and you see bone, don't give it to them frozen because they're not working it properly. So I hope that makes sense. Um, housebreaking really is something that is extremely important you, you want to lose sleep. That's, that's the best thing that I can tell you. These are the, this is true. These are the clothes I was wearing yesterday and I haven't had time to take a bath because I woke up and started working with the animals. 
but this is what I was wearing yesterday. I took a bath, put this on, and I slept in this. And that's my recommendation to you, is that you sleep in your clothes and you take the dog out in the middle of the night. And if you're not like me and can wake up, like I'll wake up at 2.30 every night. It might be 2.28, it might be 2.32, but I'm gonna wake up and take the puppy out. And if you can't do that, then set your alarm. But you want to make sure if you're going to try crate training the dog when it's real young, you better make sure that you're getting up and getting that dog out and, and build on success. Using wee wee pads is such a fool's move. I, you know, I don't know how many times I'll, I'll, I'll be talking to somebody and I'll, I'll go over to like, OK, I'll pick up your dog on Monday. And they had said that they're using wee wee pads. And I've said, like, get those wee wee pads out of there. Oh, okay, okay, I'll get them out, right? And then I go over there, and they're still using the wee-wee pads. You know, it's just like, you didn't hear what I said? I said, get the wee-wee pads out. And about 50% of the time, honestly, they got wee-wee pads in the crate, too. I guarantee you, if anybody contacts me and says that they're they have a puppy and they got wee wee pads in the crate, I'm probably gonna tell them, go find someone else. Because you clearly have never watched any of my videos, you've never done any research. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't need your money, I don't need your hassle. You cost, you're, you're, you're creating a hassle for your dog in the long run and you're gonna create a hassle for me? Don't ever put wee wee pads in the crate. And if you want me to train your puppy, you better not tell me, this is the truth, that you put wee wee pads in the crate. Because I'm just going to think that you're an idiot. I don't work with idiots. What do you want me to say? Everybody I work with is, is pretty smart. I'm not saying that, that the owners that I work with, like, they don't make mistakes. Yeah, they're allowed to make mistakes. Sure. I don't expect owners to be like me. I don't. I don't expect an owner to be, you know, I was around this when I was a kid, you know. I was always asking my dad questions about dogs, always. So I don't expect somebody that, you know, goes to school for business or something like that to understand dog training. No way. I hope this makes sense. But to know that, like, there's people out there that will, like, not even, like, sort of get the whole like crate training process. He was in a pen. This is a, this is, this is something that we should talk about. She was using a pen with him. And that's another approach that you could take with, with dogs that you're, that you're housebreaking is if you use a pen, the dog can go to the bathroom and get away from it. So if you know that you can't be around to take the dog out and the dog goes to the bathroom in your house, it sort of lessens the, the mistake meaning the dog won't lo lose that denning instinct. But if you have the dog, do you, do you see what I'm saying? Like it's a big pen, it's a big puppy pen. The dog poops over here, pees over here, and then gets away from it. But if, if, if you, see his mom is smart. Finn's mom was smart. She did some research, she got it, you know? Well, she was using wee wee pads, but you know, that seems to be one of the more common things people do. They go to the pet store, they buy the wee-wee pads. So if you if you have the dog in the pen, it goes to the bathroom and gets away from it, that's good. But if you have the dog in a crate and it goes to the bathroom and then it has to like sit in it and smell it, it loses its denning instinct. You have that option. I forgot what was going on with Tonka. I used a pen with Tonka for a week and a half, two weeks. Because he came in, he was seven weeks old, and I believe I was putting up an art show. So I was, I was frantic trying to get, get the show done, and I would use a pen just so if I made the mistake, it's about me making a mistake, not, not talk. Do you understand that if, if, if like Finn went to the bathroom in the crate right now, it would be because I made a mistake, not him. He's a dog. He needed to go to the bathroom. He went to the bathroom. I got distracted or some kind of reason. That's why I used to pen with Tonka. Because I'm like, I got to get this show up. I got to get the dog trained. 
I got to be realistic here. If I make a mistake, the dog will start going to the bathroom in the crate. Don't crate train it yet. Start using a pen. Okay? So if you know that you can't be there to let the dog out, buy one of these pens. It's a hundred bucks or something. Get one high enough that, that your dog can't, can't climb over. And also something else, this is a long video, but it's a worthwhile video. Now something else that's real important is you shouldn't plan on getting a crate for your dog as an adult when it's a puppy. That's not how it works. You get a, you get a, a crate that's a proper size for the dog when it's real young. Then you get a, a crate for the dog when it's about four months old. And then you might consider going to a bigger crate. If your dog's going to the bathroom in the crate, you might be giving it too much space. Don't think that a bigger crate is better. It's not. You need enough space to get the dog trained, meaning that it can stand up, turn around and lay down and you want the dog comfortable. But you don't want to give it like, like we wouldn't put Finn in a crate that my dog Ike you know, a hundred pound lab would be in. He would go, he would start going to the bathroom in it and pulling away from it like it's a pen. But it's not, it's a crate, it's covered. Okay? By the way, Finn, when he came in, he was real so, sort of whiny and barky. No, that's another thing that we've curtailed. It's gotten easier. Sleep hasn't necessarily gotten that much easier yet, but it's going to. And I'm assuming about the 13th week, you know, but if I go in and out, he's not barking, you know, know that the, the puppy barks, puppies bark, you know, cause they want something, they want attention, they might be hungry, whatever, but they do that. But you want to start sending that message. Don't do that puppy. Don't bark. I mean, we've had like vast improvements on a lot of things. He's still very young. But like he doesn't he doesn't hesitate he runs into the crate now that's another thing if you're giving the dog raw diet you want to feed them in the crate all right now I don't use food outside the crate the dog is already in the crate and I take the food to him and let him eat it there you do you understand what the difference is if I you don't want to bribe the dog going in the crate instead wait until the dog is calm, go get its food and take it to the dog. The dog just starts seeing the crate as something positive. I remember Finn's mom was like, can you teach Finn to go in the bag, like a, a you know, a travel bag, like a Sherpa bag. And I'm like, yeah, he's being crate trained. It's the same thing. Now he won't need to go in a Sherpa bag on the train. He will be a service dog and will be polite, but it's the same thing. Sherpa bag, crate, it doesn't matter. He just runs in there now. When Finn first came and I tried putting him in the crate, I had to like push him in there. They learned real quick. Within three days or something, now he just starts going in the crate. I just open the door. He goes running in there. So feed the dog the raw diet in the crate. You don't have to give him a bowl or anything. In most cases, it's probably going to be like a patty or something. Just put the patty in there. They eat it. If you feed the dog, and this is with adult dogs too. If you feed the adult dog, raw diet, like raw chicken outside a crate, you can start a lot of behaviors with your dog that aren't so hot, like the dog taking the food up on a, a couch or on a rug, or even food aggression. Don't do it. Just put the dog in its safe spot, its crate, let it eat and leave it alone. That way you're not starting food aggression. Finn, sit. God, he's cute. No, sit. You're a good boy, Finny. Finny Winnie. Look at how cute this munchkin is. It's like a little midget. You call me a midget again? He is, he's a little midget. Look at this guy. Look at his face. Look at the face of Finn. Hey, look at me, it's Finn. Look at how cute he is. He's adorable. He was, hey, lick my ear, don't do that. You're a munchkin. You called me a Duncan munchkin the other day. Look at him. It's a midget. Finn doesn't like Trump. I wonder what Trump's doing today. I bet he's not hanging out with the dog. He might be the president, but I think my life is a lot better than Trump's.
Seriously, I get to hang out with Finn. He's so cute. Mom, he's making me wear stupid shit. Check it out, I'm a fucking cowboy and shit. I'm Sheriff Finn. Look at me. That looks ridiculous, Finn. It's Finn's Halloween costume, maybe. We're gonna dress him up a few different ways, and then you all decide what's the best costume. This one will be Sheriff Finn, you know? I, I haven't decided yet, but we're gonna definitely dress Finn up because he's pretty adorable. He's easy, he's, he's, he's easy on the eyes, that's for sure. Look at him. Look at how cute he is. There's my raven. He wears the hat pretty good.